Week number seven of the NFL season is here, and we are just flying through the football season. And I want to apologize to all of you for the last couple of weeks getting upset and frustrated for no reason. I like to make predictions, and I like to, you know, do the best every single week. But I come to realize that it's not me just struggling. It's just the fact that the NFL has just been so competitive this season. I'm not sure what the stat line was that they read out on last night's Broncos-Chargers game. I think it was this season it's the record for most one-possession games after six weeks in NFL history. So this is a very historic season. So I'm just going to, you know, just try to get into a rhythm here. I went 7-7 seven and seven last week, which was average. But these close games here, I mean, the Commanders and Bears, that's literally a coin flip because both teams are terrible. I mean, the Saints had the lead against the Bengals late, but they blew it. The Giants over the Ravens, that was an upset I did not see coming, despite the Giants being now 5-1. and one. And the fact that the Steelers, with rookie quarterback Kenny Pickett, he did leave the game, but Mitch Trubisky finished off the job and upset the Bucks 2018. So this has been a very over-the-top season so far where we have the Packers and Bucks at 3-3, three and three, which is not something that I expected coming into the season. And the Broncos are 2-4. and four. If you would have told me after week six that the Denver Broncos would have the worst scoring offense in the league, I would have questioned you. But the Broncos' offense has just been so anemic and so lethargic, it's exhausting to watch. And the fact that the Broncos play three more times in primetime this season, I am just extremely irritated watching that offense every single week. And I'm glad that, you know, in my hometown, the Broncos games aren't showing since, since I'm in the Midwest, we get the Midwest teams every week, like Broncos, Chiefs, Vikings, Bears, Packers, you know, those teams. But let's get to the week seven predictions. And we begin, as always, with Thursday night football. And this week, Thursday night football features, come on, big money, big money, big money. Ah, dang it, the Saints and the Cardinals. And once again, for a Thursday night game, I have no idea who to pick. Not only are both these teams terrible, but both these teams are riddled with injuries beyond repair. In fact, these two teams combined have a total of 27 players on the injury report going into this game on Thursday night. The Cardinals just traded for Robbie Anderson. Hollywood Brown is out indefinitely. And for the Saints, Michael Thomas is expected to be out once again this week as Michael Thomas is turning into the next Julio Jones. So it's going to be playing for about two, three games and then be injured the rest of the year. I don't know who the Saints quarterback is going to be at this point. We don't know either. Is it going to be Jameis Winston, Andy Dalton, or are they going to do the smart thing at this point and put Taysom Hill at quarterback because clearly he's been the best quarterback on this roster. But... I will admit that I think this is going to be that one pick that I want to change. And if I do change a pick, I will post a community thread on it. But I am leaning towards the Cardinals. Because the Cardinals, I've seen a bit more potential in them. And that is really saying something. Despite the Saints being a more competitive team throughout the year. But I just got to go with the reliable quarterback in this matchup because at least we know Kyler Murray is going to be under center but for the Saints we don't know so I'm going Arizona but that could be a pick I change and I'll let you know if I do 
Moving on to the Falcons and the Bengals, and the Falcons are going to give me and the rest of their fan base false hope, aren't they? They find themselves at 3-3 three three, right in the NFC South race with the Buccaneers, something I did not expect. I didn't even expect the Falcons to be right with the Bucks in the NFC South, let alone be second in that division after Week 6. And this Falcons team... They could easily be four and two, even five and one. This Falcons team has put such a strong effort this season, and they are one of the surprises this season, believe it or not. And unfortunately, people don't know that because we're focused on the Giants at five and one. We're focused on the Jets. We're focused on the Eagles. But the Falcons haven't really gotten their credit this season. And I think if they upset the reigning AFC champs on the road, I do think they're going to get some notoriety after that. And I, in fact, do think they will pull off the upset against the Bengals. They had a come-behind win last week against the Saints. And I did mention about Zach Taylor's play calling last week, and Joe Burrow looked like he was very frustrated as they showed a picture of him with his arms folded, waiting for Zach Taylor to finish his media questions. And he looked pretty frustrated. But even if the Falcons don't win, I still think they are going to cover. Because I believe they're a six and a half point dog right now. And even if they don't win, it's going to be, I think, along the lines of the round game week two, where they get behind early, but in the second half, they rally, and they fall just short. So I'm paying the Falcons pull off the upset, but I think this is one of the swing games of the week that, that goes either way. Moving on to the Lions and the Cowboys, Dak Prescott is expected to be the starting quarterback for the Cowboys on Sunday, as he has missed the last five games with a thumb injury. And the Lions are coming off of a bye week. Now, I was going to originally pick the Lions to win this game, as they are second in total offense in the NFL. But, with Dak being back for the Cowboys, and with what they've been doing in Dak's absence, I think the Cowboys are going to win this game with the ground and pound. They're going to take advantage of their one-two punch in Zeke and Pollard. As I don't see Dak throwing this football more than 30 times on Sunday. I think 30 is the most, and I'll be surprised if he throws the ball more than 30 times. Because they got to get Dak back into rhythm. And what better way to do that than make him comfortable under center by relying on your running game like you have been in his absence. So I am going with the Cowboys to get the dub. AFC South matchup, Colts and Titans. And I am going to pick the Colts in this game. The Titans, they are coming off of a bye week. While the Colts are coming off of a thrilling win against the Jaguars last week. But for some reason, the Titans don't usually win when they are a home favorite. When they're favorites, they tend to play very sloppy. Example, week one against the Giants. They were a favorite, and they lost. Despite the unknowns for the Colts right now, their running game is a huge question mark. Jonathan Taylor has missed the last couple of weeks. Will he be able to play this week? It's being reported there's a chance right now that he will be able to play. Naeem Hines missed last week due to concussion. And Deion Jackson, third string back, left the game last week against Jacksonville. So who knows who the running back will be. But I am going to pick the Colts to win this matchup. As the Colts, they are fairly inconsistent in my eyes. One week, they're beating the Chiefs, a legitimate threat to win the Super Bowl. And then the next... They end up winning a sloppy game in overtime, and they have to win the last minute against Jacksonville. 
Matt Ryan has been the most sacked quarterback in the NFL so far this season, and he leads the league in interceptions. So I have a feeling that this could be a potential breakout game for Matt Ryan. Moving on to the Packers and the Commanders, and I am going with the Packers as they certainly should and they better win. I'm just being brutally honest. Because if the Packers can't beat the Commanders with backup quarterback Taylor Heineke, then it's time to panic. In fact, they probably should be panicking already. And if I'm a part of the Packers front office, I am going on the phone with the Panthers to try to get DJ Moore. As the problem with the Packers right now is they don't have an elite receiver. They don't have Devontae anymore. So they have no true elite receiver. Alan Lazard has been stepping up in these last couple of weeks for the Packers, as has Romeo Dobbs. But Romeo Dobbs is a rookie, and Alan Lazard is not even close to an elite level. I'm not saying that one day he could, but he is nowhere near it. So I'm going with the Packers, but if the Commanders pull off this upset... It is time to panic in Green Bay, at least full-on panic. Buccaneers and Panthers, and like the Packers this week, if the Buccaneers can't beat the Panthers, a team that just fired their head coach a week ago, and a team that has no idea the quarterback's going to be, whether if it's XFL quarterback P.J. Walker or Jacob Eason. If they can't beat P.J. Walker or Jacob Eason, whoever it's going to be, then full-on panic for Tampa Bay. Am I doubting Tom Brady? No, I'm not. But he's got to be panicking a little bit. And if I'm Tom Brady, I'm actually taking my off day on Wednesday to reach out to Rob Gronkowski and Julian Edelman. Also, reach out to Antonio Brown while you're at it. I think that A.B. will be open to coming back with the Bucks since Bruce Arians isn't the coach anymore. But it's unknown at this point. I am going with the Buccaneers, and the Buccaneers, I mean, to be honest, they better win this game. Because if they don't, then, yeah, Tom Brady's, I think it's his swan song season. And if they lose this game, I am really questioning their chances of winning the Super Bowl, let alone making the playoffs. I mean, lucky for them, their biggest competition in the division is the Falcons. Moving on to the Giants and the Jaguars. The Giants taking the league by storm, 5-1 and one on the season. Saquon's comeback season is off to a blazing start in these first six weeks. They upset the Titans week one. They upset the Ravens last week. They upset the Packers in London. And now the Giants find themselves as underdogs. And I did originally pick Jacksonville before recording this, but now that I think about it, It's hard to pick against the Giants right now. The Giants' only loss on the season is to a Cowboys team in primetime. So the Giants, they could be a 6-0 team right now if one thing goes differently on that Monday Night Football game. So I am switching my pick from the Jaguars to the Giants, and I really hope I don't regret this down the line. Moving on to the Browns and the Ravens. The Ravens are looking to bounce back from that loss to the Giants. While the Browns... Well, the Browns are not as bad of a team as their record shows. But I am going to go with the Ravens. Lamar typically dominates against the Browns. And I think that continues. Even though the Ravens lost last week, they're still a very talented team. 
a team that has been decimated with injuries the last year and a half. And I think Lamar is going to put the team on his back this week. I'm talking 300 plus passing yards, maybe even another 60 rushing yards, four or five total touchdowns. And I think the Ravens dominate in this matchup. But on the other hand, the Browns, well, there have been a lot of upsets so far this season. But I'm stick with my pick with the Ravens. Moving on to the Jets and the Broncos. The Broncos once again embarrassed themselves in prime time this past Monday night. And we once again wasted about three and a half hours of our lives watching that clown show. And to make matters worse, the Broncos are scheduled to play three more primetime games this season. So when you add those three games up, that's about 12 hours of our time are going to be wasted watching the Broncos in primetime for the rest of the year. In fact, let's just count how many points they have scored in their primetime games this season. 16 in week one against the Seahawks, 11 against the 49ers, but let's just be honest. They only scored nine of those points, so 25 points so far. And then a whopping nine points against the Colts, and then a whopping 16 points last night against the Chargers. So the Broncos offense has generated 50 points in their four primetime games this season. And Nathaniel Hackett has the audacity to say that he wants more urgency. He wants more urgency. When he has really cost the Broncos this season so far with his very terrible play calling. Did the Broncos not learn anything with the Cowboys and Mike McCarthy? Nathaniel Hackett is basically this decade's version of Mike McCarthy. Somebody that was getting by off of talented people around him, i.e. Aaron Rodgers. I will be shocked if Nathaniel Hackett is still the Broncos head coach in 2024. John Elway might be generous and give him until 2023. But Russell Wilson fantasy owners are absolutely frustrated. Cortland Sutton ones are aggravated. Jerry Judy ones are hoping he requests a trade before the deadline. As you can tell, he is extremely frustrated. And can you believe that the Broncos, if it weren't for their defense, they would be 0-6. Their defense carried them in their two wins. So if the Broncos just had an average defense, they would be 0-6. And, and they have no future, essentially. As they gave up, what was it, four first-round picks for Russell Wilson? Honestly, the Broncos, they should really consider trading Jerry Judy and trying to get some draft capital back for this $256 million mistake so far in Russell Wilson. And it matters worse, he was getting an MRI today on his hamstring as it is possible that it is significant it's potentially significant so honestly whether or not he's going to play or not this week i'm picking the jets because at least the jets have shown competence on offense unlike the broncos and the jets i said i wouldn't really ever pick them until they prove they can win games and they have done that this season i'm picking the jets to beat the Broncos, and honestly, pretty significantly, as really your magic number to beat the Broncos is probably 17 points. The Jets are capable of doing that. Moving on to the Texans and the Raiders, both these teams coming off of a bye week. It's uncertain Devontae Adams will face any type of suspension for his actions 
after the Monday Night Football game against the Chiefs, we're shoving the cameraman. But I think no matter what happens, I'd still like the Raiders in this matchup. Now, the Texans, I think, they have a pretty bright future, as they do have some pieces, such as Damian Pierce, Brandon Cooks, if they don't deal him at the deadline, as that's something I could really see. I could see a contender maybe trying to make a move for Brandon Cooks. But anyways, I am picking the Raiders to win this matchup. Moving on to the Seahawks and the Chargers. The Seahawks dominated against the Cardinals last week. We saw the good defense out of Seattle last week. As their defense has been pretty up and down throughout the season. So depending on how the defense is for the Seahawks. Determines if they're going to win the game or not. And I am going to ultimately pick the Chargers to win this matchup. Although the Seahawks they do have. A shining star in the making at running back in Kenneth Walker. And I would not be surprised if they just continue to just feed and feed Kenneth Walker. We're talking like maybe 30 total touches to keep that Chargers offense on the sidelines. But I am picking the Chargers, though, as I think this is the week we see the bad Seahawks defense. Moving on to the Chiefs and the 49ers, a rematch of Super Bowl 54. And I had a bit of mixed feelings on this game. If the 49ers defense rises to the occasion, I think it's going to be a long day for Mahomes and the Chiefs. As in the Super Bowl, the 49ers defense, they were holding their own against the Chiefs until that fourth quarter. And it was a deep pass to Tyree Kill that changed that game. And now Tyree Kill is no longer on the Chiefs. And it is National Tight End Day this weekend. So I really want to see Travis Kelsey and George Kittle both get touchdowns in this game. As Travis Kelsey is basically the professor at Tight End U. While George Kittle, I'd say, is the dean of tight end you so i am going to go with the chiefs in this one i think this game is going to be a lot like super bowl 54 with the 49ers defense they do hold their own the majority of the game but i think this time around it's going to be a deep pass to me hardman that changes the game so i'm going with the chiefs to win from behind in the fourth quarter Steelers and Dolphins on Sunday Night Football. Tua Tagovailoa is expected to be back for the Dolphins this Sunday night, which is very exciting as the last time we saw Tua on the football field. He left the game against the Bengals with a head injury. And the scene that night, to say it was horrifying, is an understatement. As that was very frightening, intimidating, and disgusting with the way the NFL and the Dolphins, they handled that. And I'm rooting for Tua to win this game. In fact, I think the Steelers, I think despite holding Brady and the Bucks to 18 points last week, with the majority of their defense being backups, I think the speed of Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell are going to be the ultimate difference maker in this game. As this Steelers defense, I'd say it's fairly inconsistent like the Seahawks defense. One week, they look, you know, they look pretty good, such as last week. And the next week, they're absolutely getting the brakes beaten off of them by the Bills, which there's really no shame to that. The Bills are probably arguably the best team in the league right now. While the Dolphins defense... It's had, his, it's had its moments this season. But I think we're in for a relatively lower scoring game. I don't expect it to be a barn burner, but I do expect the Dolphins to win this game behind big performances by Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell. I would not be surprised if both of them got over 100 yards each. So I'm going with Miami 
And week seven wraps up with Monday Night Football, the Bears and the Patriots. The Bears are coming off of that heartbreaking loss on Thursday Night Football, just that completely anemic 12-7 game. Well, the Patriots, I told you after they lost the Packers in overtime that it reminded me of last year when they took on the Cowboys and lost in overtime, and they just got momentum. These last couple of games, just dominant wins. Bailey Zappi, he needs to be the starting quarterback for the Patriots. And if Bill Belichick is smart like we think he is, Bailey Zappi will be the permanent starter for the New England Patriots. And I think the Patriots, they once again win on Monday night. I think it's going to be behind a big game by Ramondre Stevenson. And I think Hunter Henry gets a touchdown to wrap up National Tight Ends Weekend. As the Bears, I don't know what I saw in the Bears last week to pick them to beat the Commanders. I just don't know. Just the Bears, they just need a lot of help. And that will do it for my NFL Week 7 predictions. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Come your picks down below. Have a good day and enjoy the NFL this weekend. Hard to believe it's already been seven weeks.